people want to give you respect by always calling you an artist no matter what you do because they assume you're going to feel much better if you're called an artist. But I usually refer to myself as a craft artist. Sometimes I am just a craftsman. But sometimes I'm an artist. And so I like to think that I can be both. And I sort of switch back and forth between them. It's, pretty, it's probably a good way to, to handle it, be a craft artist. I like working alone. Uh, I think it suits me. Uh, there's something really nice about not having to deal with, like getting up in the morning and not having to, d to uh, drive to work and get along with people. I mean, I think I can do it. I can't think I can do it, but this is really free. I use only white oak. That's what this is. I gathered this wood in South Madison County. And what's neat about it is, well, I have my own woods, so I have a supply. And if there's anything that I need, well, I can pretty much make it. And so I can do original work. And that's a lot of what I think gives work import at all is the fact that, you know, the, the maker is, you know, doing his own ideas. I found that the old tools have a lot better feel to them. I have always liked that idea of um, taking something really crude, I mean really basic tools just like knives and some splitting tools and doing something uh, creative and, uh, well in my case, decorative. When I was young, I dropped out of college. I was going to the University of Kansas, Lawrence, Kansas, and I dropped out because I guess I wanted some adventure and I, I didn't have a really good direction. And a lot of people were moving to Madison County. It was part of the Back to the Land movement. In the 70s, there was sort of a revival in craft. And at the same time, there was a new idea of craft as art. And the idea was to think of baskets, just like glass and ceramics, as I guess it's called object-oriented, where you do something perhaps beautiful or interesting, and it's displayed to you hope make someone's life a little better when they're living in this environment, that they have something really nicely woven that's being displayed. Rather than the only market for work being as uh, work baskets, like if this doesn't hold tomatoes or something, then there's no point in making it. Well, typically here, you would refer to it as a workshop in Arkansas or in Madison County. This is a workshop. When I'm away from home, I refer to it as a studio because it makes sense. I have a really big work table here, and uh, it usually stays cluttered because I just like let every letting everything out that I'm working with as opposed to putting it away. That's one nice thing about a space like this where no one comes but me. It's like you can leave everything out. If you leave a cup of coffee a week later, it's still right where you left it. But basically... Sometimes I need odds and ends, I need a scrap, or I need just some little thing to make a template with, or I need something to try or something, and I always have a pile to reach into, which would be lots more difficult when it's put away. With, uh, with a lot of tasks, it seems every, a lot of us in the prep, and it seems to be the prep that we, don't, we least like, but the prep seems to be the most time-consuming part of baskets, putting it together isn't quite so, so time consuming. I have a bandsaw on the porch. I've always had a bandsaw. So I'll take the same little billet that's squared up and I'll actually strike a straight line and just saw with a small guide to about a quarter of an inch thickness. Fine decorative work you know, requires this kind of steps. But if you get used to it, you know, you can just move along and there's always ways to make it more interesting. This is called a splint vise because it's a vise used to make splints. And of course, as with so many tools like this, they're always homemade because they're, they're just not available commercially. Believe you me, there are not many of us who do this. This is called a splint knife. 
You can see it's homemade as well. These little carriage bolts allow me to open and close the front. I can see it's going to cut too thick a splint, so I'm going to close it down a little bit because we're going to pull off a thinner splint. Basically, I do everything by eye. I pull off an even layer of a growth ring. It's what gives the material its flexibility. What happens whenever you cross in and out of a growth ring, it's like cutting the thread and it will just snap. But if you stay with and you pull off a long thread, you can like t instantly like tie it in a knot. So it's all in, in the technique. But it's a slow technique, so that's the drawback. Having these fine little weavers, it's, it's almost like showing off because it's just really, it's just really neat that uh, they can be so fine and flexible from, you know, like I said earlier, such rough tools. I darken these weavers with walnut hulls. They stain wood right away. So if I put wood in here, you know, for 10 minutes or one hour, I would already have a shade of brown if that's all I did. Well, the center of each rib, I drill a small hole just big enough for the needle. I lay the rib works out, and then I take a little, a really small piece of splint and uh, just begin weaving. Pretty much everything I do anymore is pretty much over under. It's called simple weaving because there's a lot of complex weaving. There's lots of kind of weaving patterns, but this is simple weaving. And I like it because I'm just really all about form here. I'm not trying to do nice patterns. I always weave freehand, uh, just, sitting here with, just sitting here with it in my lap. And basically, I do the this, this shape just by tension. And I mostly do closed shapes, so I usually bring the top in always as a rule. It's clumsy at first, but as the basket starts to take shape, I can relax more uh, and sit back a little easier because then I'm really sort of working with the U shape. Uh, but I love to work freehand. And when it's completed, it will actually look it will look like it was uh, done precisely, and really, really, it's just all I. One neat thing about my baskets is most all the time, like 90% of the time, I do a little asymmetrical, uh, a little forward lean. It gives it a little bit forward lean and hopefully a little bit of a personality. And it also gives it a face to dress. So I like that a lot. This is one of the things I'm most known for, is overlay on the surface. A basket is woven horizontally, and when you put like overlay splint on the surface, basically I'm working with vertical, and I'm working with wide, flat vertical. So you get this really nice complement where you have fine horizontal, and then you introduce a bolder, bigger, flatter vertical. And then, depending on how much you do it, you actually outline a surface. And if you're trying to do really nice form, that uh, outlining the surface can really make it pop. We want to think like an artist. And if you limit yourself and, you know, to uh, what you've done before, you can't really change anything. So I really felt like I needed to reinvent myself. If you think of baskets as sculptural anyway, or if you sort of think of them, you know, they're being sculpted, you know, then you could think of doing sculptural kind of work. And so the open rib work really was just uh, maybe an extension of what I was already doing. I'm basically outlining a form without filling it in. And since it's just bent in space, you can be a lot more free about shapes. I like the idea of it being you know, new, new and interesting. And I mean, I didn't stop doing what I'm, what I'm doing. I still need to weave baskets. But if you have good techniques, and if you can have good ideas, then you can take these new ideas and keep fooling around with them, and hopefully you would like create something new using the very same techniques. I even get feedback that's interesting. Like, I mean, sometimes people really don't like it, which means which means they're really taking note. And there is something about not always being pretty. So, because 
I, I didn't want to just be somebody who made, to see how beautiful I could make something. I like the idea of being creative. Um, and one of the most rewarding things that I can think about, and sometimes when I get really down, when I don't, you know, I don't get really tired of it, I realize that almost everything is being recorded. I mean, like every stitch is being recorded and people take such good care of it. Everything I do every day, somebody is taking such good care of because uh, like I, fi I, I find a home for everything, mostly. And it's a pretty neat idea that it could be that way. You know, it doesn't just doesn't like doesn't disappear, but it's almost like every it's almost like, you know, recording my day day after day. It's kind of neat. For the most part, baskets as in ordinary baskets as, as I'm just a basket maker who makes baskets. It's not a particularly interesting craft right now to the public. So all the more reason for me to mix it up a lot. <laughs>